Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and on this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to take a look at Intel's Clear Linux. And so Intel has developed their own distribution called Clear Linux, and they're attempting to do some bold new things in this distribution. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to divide this video into two. The first video we're going to look at is uh, whether or not, uh, well, the first video is going to look at what Intel claims Clear Linux does. And then the second video, we're going to install it, we're going to kick the tires, and we're going to find out how well it meets the claims. So what is Clear Linux? What is it really designed for and who is it for? Well, the first, thing, qu the first question, who is it for, is it's for developers. It's for uh, corporations that are uh, deploying applications of their own and, and they need to be able to deploy into a test environment. They need to make sure that they vet the, the software and that it's working properly. And then second, once they've done that, to be able to install that in a production environment and be able to keep all those configurations consistent across uh, the installation base. So the, 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 the main thing that Intel was trying to do with uh, Clear Linux is to create a performant, a high performance system. And that is to be optimized for the Intel architecture. Does that mean it won't work on AMD? No, not at all. It will work on AMD. But the, uh, the, the main focus here is for Intel to showcase its, its processors and of course it's going to be heavily slanted toward, toward them, uh, as all vendors will do. Uh, but all aspects of the system are optimized. It's not just uh, the kernel, it's also the applications, it's the libraries, it's the compilers, and it's also the options the compilers pick in order to compile applications under Clear Linux. Clear Linux also offers uh, security, and there are some examples of what it does. The first one is it does constant vulnerability checking with the NVD and alerts you if there are CVEs that will impact the installation that you have. Also, it has a common uh, certificate authority in that it uh, keeps your certificates safe and away from uh, the normal places where people would be able to find them. Also, uh, it enables security features out of the box. So these software packages are installed and ready for use. There's IP tables, SSH, OpenSSL, IPsec, VPN, and then the actual updates to the system, of course, are signed. That's not unique uh, to Clear Linux. A lot of distributions do that today. One of the more interesting features about Clear Linux, to me at least, is in the customization and manageability section. Uh, in a traditional uh, Linux distribution, your configuration files can exist anywhere in the system, uh, and they're all mixed together. You, your, your user configurations are mixed in with your operating system and your system configurations. There isn't, it's, it's basically a big mess. Uh, I mean, you, if, if you're trying to restore a system and get the configurations back, you've got to go hunt down every single place where a configuration exists and has been, uh, has been deployed. And that includes configurations for your database, your app servers, your applications, uh, the operating system kernel, and the configurations for mount, even mounting file systems, of course. Uh, what Intel has done is they've taken that and they've created a, a stateless concept and they've organized that according to, uh, to try to separate that configuration into categories. There are user configurations, the, the things that you need for your application or for your performance uh, enhancements for your application. There's also operating system level configuration and system configuration and those are all kept separate. If you go into the Etsy directory under Clear Linux, you'll find a very sparse uh, environment. Uh, and the reason for that is that the Etsy directory is the uh, modified configurations, not the default configurations. The default configurations are stored elsewhere. And the reason for that is very simple. It gives you one level of safety uh, in that if you do mess up a configuration to the point where you just don't know where the heck you are anymore, you can simply erase the, all the files in the Etsy directory and then restart your system and uh, Clear Linux on the startup will redeploy a default set of configurations back and get you back to a baseline. Don't try that, <laughs> Don't try that on any other distribution. You'll end up with an unbootable system. It only works on Clear Linux. Um, 
Also, the updates are Delta updates, uh, so it does not redeploy the application every time there's an update, only the changes to that application. Uh, in order to facilitate that, there's an automated development tool called the Mixer, and that allows you to compile just the Delta changes that you need. Now, now you might think that make files do that, but make files compile the entire uh, code. So if, if you change the main.c in a C program, make is going to recompile that. It, this is talking about the Delta changes. So if I change one line in the main C, it's only going to recompile that one. That, it's only going to redeploy that one thing. Uh, it also creates a customized release, uh, and uh, it, 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 that customized release is also a Delta change. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, there's some other aspects of that I want to talk about. So the other thing is uh, if you have proxies in your environment, Clear Linux will find them. It'll auto-configure itself. There's nothing you have to do. Uh, one of the other elements that it offers is telemetry, and telemetry is really, uh, is really there to provide a means where the user is taken out of the loop and reporting bugs to the developers and the support teams. The system does that for you. And it, however, it is an opt-in. It's off by default. It does report telemetry to Intel. And there is some anonymized uh, means of encoding that telemetry using the only thing in there that's identifiable is the machine ID. And that machine ID is generated every three days. So. Uh, it's really meant to tell tell Intel that, hey, this particular area of your system has a problem. They can diagnose it. They can look at it and get a patch out to everyone for it to fix that particular problem if they deem that it needs that. But it also offers companies and developers a way to use telemetry in their own applications. And if you choose, you can set up your own telemetry servers as well in order to track your own performance of your applications on how well they are doing and whether or not they're failing, and they will help you then diagnose that uh, without having to wait for the users to call, which is not a good thing to have to do either. Clear Linux is, uh, uh, uses a, a, new a new packaging concept, <laughs> what distro doesn't today, but this one's a little bit different uh, than just simply renaming a, a package manager. So if you go out and you look on a traditional Linux uh, uh, distribution, you'll if you look at uh, just a list of the applications that are involved, there are tens of thousands of applications uh, and packages available for installation. Some of those packages have been turned sub-packages. And the problem that Intel sees here is twofold. First is trying to keep the sub-packages and the packages in sync with one another. Uh, if you're doing security updates, uh, you might end up in a condition where you install a sub-package that isn't supported by the main package. Uh, the other problem is, is that sometimes the sub-packages, I say sometimes lightly, I've seen this a lot, where the version numbers of the sub-package don't align in any way, shape, or form to the application that it belongs to. So you have no idea if the sub-package will work or not until you've tried it. And if you happen to be doing that, as part of an update, well, you're taking down your production environment and that's not a good place to find out that you've got a problem. So what they're trying to do is Intel is saying, okay, you can use the package concept in the development machine and then you can go ahead and, and resolve the dependencies there. But once you have finished and once you have gotten a package all together, you run the, uh, make the, uh, the uh, uh, mixer tool to create a bundle. You're done with dependency management uh, in deploying to your test and your production environments. You're, you're done. You, you, there, there, is, there isn't any dependency resolution that takes place anymore after the bundle is created. Uh, so that's really the idea behind it. The second thing that Intel does is they create, uh, they provide a list of, of packages through bundles. And those bundles are tied to a use case. So you have a C developer use case bundle, a Python developer, uh, a, a, a Ruby developer or maybe a Golang developer uh, set of use cases and then it, it installs tools that that developer will need in order to deploy, app, to create and, deploy, and write deployable applications. Uh, and again, it, it resolves dependencies at the build time and not when you're trying to roll to production. Uh, Clear Linux also has containers. Uh, they support traditional Docker containers and they also have uh, something new called the Cata container, which basically is a hybrid. It provides a very thin VM, 
So you have the security of the VM wrapping Docker, and then you have the speed of the Docker container, so you're really getting a best of both worlds. You're getting some security and isolation of that Docker container, plus you're getting the speed out of that Docker container as well. There is a couple things to be aware of, and that is it depends on where you deploy your clear Linux. If you're deploying on, on bare metal, the CAN runtime is used, but if you're using a virtual machine, uh, you, I mean, obviously, your virtual machine inside of a virtual machine needs special management, and so they use Run C uh, in order to do that. So you may run into some issues in in the level of support that you're getting from your runtime because uh, those two can, those two runtimes are, are very different, and they support different parts of the standard uh, for containers. So just be aware of that. Uh, there is an older version uh, called Clear Containers. Don't use that. It's being deprecated. Uh, it's no longer actively updated. So don't don't head down that road. Use the Kata containers if you want the VM support. Use Docker containers if that's all you need is the Docker container support. There's some other features like uh, the NVIDIA drivers are supported. You have Flatpak installs that you can do. YubiKey is supported to provide a layer of, of uh, MFA or 2FA. Uh, security and also tensor uh, flow bundles are available as well if you're in the AI space and you're doing that kind of work. Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes container orchestration is also provided in a bundle if you're using that to orchestrate your deployments. Uh, but there's also bulk provisioning uh, to bare metal which is through the Eister Cloud uh, in initialization service and Pixie and so you can set up a uh, a baseline configuration with your applications and your and all the things you need on it in order to baseline and install and then mass deploy it out to a number of servers all at once that are bare metal and have no operating system on them already. Uh, some of the minimum requirements you have, these are the list of the processor families that Intel supports with Clear Linux. Uh, it is quite extensive and a lot of these go back uh, pretty far. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through these, but I, I am just going to leave this here for you to look at. Um, there is, there is, however, some areas of concern that you might want to be pay attention to, and that is with the uh, processor support. Uh, if you have concerns about this, my suggestion would be to go to the Arc Intel site and look these up uh, for your processor and see if uh, your processor is compliant. Uh, the other way to do it is you can install the uh, live C, the live ISO for Clear Linux, and then choose the compatibility check and have it look at your processor and your environment and it will tell you if you're compliant or not. The other thing you need is a, a UFE environment so if you have that you're all set to go. Uh, the other minimum is that you need 4 gig of memory and 20 gig of, of hard disk. You need a graphics card uh, which supports OpenGL and that of course can be the uh, inbuilt uh, GPU on the uh, uh, an Intel processor. You also need, of course, an active Intel connection. Clear Linux is a rolling release, and they do release about nine times a week. Uh, it is quite frequent uh, for the updates, and that is to make sure that the uh, it is ahead of the security curve and that there's you know your new things are available to you. Uh, as far as the concerns on telemetry, uh, the thing the first thing to remember about it is it's an opt-in solution. It's off by default. Um, it is meant to collect uh, bugs in the system and deficiencies in the system and report them to Intel. So it takes the user out of the loop, like I said, and replaces it by the system doing it. Uh, if you turn it on, uh, there are probes that get created to monitor uh, the kernel, to look at the package installs, to look at any machine errors or any BIOS errors that might get uh, uh, reported, and then those are stored in a directory. And you can go look at them. You can look them up. Uh, there's a telemetrics configuration that determines how often to send them to Intel or whether to send them to Intel or at all. You can send them to your own servers if you choose to do that. You can also generate uh, custom telemetrics through the API for your application. So if you, wanna, uh, if you want to have telemetrics on those, you can do that as well. So there's a number of things you can do here with that. And uh, I think some of the concerns about it are maybe a little tinfoil hatted. Uh, but, you know, it's always good never to trust, <laughs> trust but verify, <clears throat> as we always say. <clears throat> so with that, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, first look at uh, Intel Clear Linux. And next time we'll, we'll actually look at a demo and see it work. And uh, I appreciate you watching if you got this far. And I hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.